Hello and welcome to our roundup of the European Parliament's latest plenary session here in Strasbourg. Well, there's been a glut of gloomy economic news this week with Greece under yet more pressure and Italy, the Netherlands and Germany all reporting negative growth. For the EPP group, there's no higher priority than turning that situation around. This week, the focus was on generating growth and creating jobs across Europe. There's widespread agreement that the best medicine for the economic ills that Europe is facing is to promote the conditions for the economy to expand. And with unemployment so high in many member states, especially youth unemployment, MEPs are well aware of the primary importance of developing new job opportunities. EPP member Jean-Paul Gauzès of France is Parliament's rapporteur on the EU's annual growth report and in a debate on the report he set out the measures the EU needed to take. Clearly these measures need to deal first and foremost with an emergence from the sovereign debt crisis. They need to be coupled with a push for growth through increased competitivity and the promotion of a sustainable economy that creates jobs. MEPs are calling for member states to do more to reform their economies, to make them more competitive and more flexible, and better able to create growth and jobs. Italy is one of the most indebted countries in the EU. Its economy has been moribund for years and its borrowing costs have soared in recent months. But Mario Monti, who was appointed Italy's Prime Minister late last year, has shown his determination to get his country back on track. Mr Monti, a former European Commissioner, made a statement before MEPs and responding for the EPP group was our chairman, Joseph Dahl. I would like to say to you, Mario Monti, that the economic reforms that you have embarked on are a good example in two ways. Firstly, because you have continued many reforms begun by the previous government. Secondly, you have implemented important changes, particularly with regard to liberalizing some professions. That's a step in the right direction because it will create jobs and stimulate competition. The Monti government is expected to remain in power in a caretaker capacity for just over a year ahead of elections. Now, much of Europe remains in the grip of icy weather, which has brought death and disruption in its wake. The weather has prompted MEPs to take a renewed look at the plight of homeless people in the EU. And a food aid scheme aimed at Europe's most vulnerable and neediest citizens has also come under the spotlight. The cold weather is a nuisance for most of us, but for some it's been a tragedy. Dozens of deaths have been reported across Europe, and most of those who died had one thing in common. They were homeless. The freezing temperatures have renewed MEPs' attention on the plight of Europe's homeless people. EPP Group Chairman Joseph Dahl, speaking in an urgently convened debate, called for Europe to remember its values. At the time of speaking, more than 600 people have died in the past few days in Europe, victims of cold and isolation. It's time to remember that Europe is not just about economic and financial issues. It's above all about solidarity. The wave of cold weather affecting our populations gives us an opportunity to show that. For the past 25 years, the EU has operated a food aid scheme, buying up agricultural surpluses and distributing them to the poorest and neediest citizens in the Union. But surpluses began to run out last year, and the European Commission, which manages the programme, sought to buy food stocks on the open market. Polish EPP Group member Szczesław Adam Szekierski is the Parliament's rapporteur on this issue, and he explains what happened. Some of the member states referred this situation to the European Court of Justice, which said buying food on the open market was unlawful. There was no consensus in the Council, and we had to consider an alternative structure for this program. But after long negotiations, the Polish presidency brokered a deal that will allow the system to continue in its current form until the end of next year. The Sierkierski report was passed by Parliament, but the EPP group remains supportive of the food distribution system, and the member states that want to abolish it have won few friends. A key part of Europe's growth and jobs agenda is exploiting the latest technological developments to give the Union a competitive edge. This week, MEPs have been discussing exciting new opportunities related to opening up parts of the radio spectrum. 
Should we be the best or not? That is the question Swedish EPP member Gunnar Högmark asked himself when he was made Parliament's rapporteur for the EU's radio spectrum policy. Rapidly increasing use of mobile broadband has created demand for allocation of new frequencies. Following a decision by Parliament, a further 1,200 MHz will be made available by 2015, a development Mr Högmark welcomed during a debate on his report. We will secure that we can meet the increasing demands and be in the lead for quite a long time and offer the best possible capacities for European industry, be it service sector or be it the telecom industry as such. We also have agreed that the Commission 2015 shall assess the need for further freeing up frequencies in order to secure that we can have all the best opportunities. Mr Hookmark wants to go even further than this week's decision as access to mobile broadband is essential for economic growth and Europe is at risk of falling behind in competition with America and China. The rapporteur says his ambition is to make Europe home of the wireless revolution. What we are up to now is to take a decision that will provide us with opportunities to achieve leadership in telecom, but also to increase the competitiveness and opportunities for new services. The Hookmark report was adopted by Parliament, sending a clear signal to the Council about MEP's priorities. Well, that's all for now from the Strasbourg session. We'll be back here in Strasbourg in March. But in the meantime, you can catch up with all the day-to-day -day developments from Europe's largest and most influential political force on our website, eppgroup.eu. Thanks for watching and see you again soon.